everyone, I'm Jesse from the Janger Zone and this is a brand new setup, so let me know if you like it. So GOAT format is the most popular of the retro Yu-Gi-Oh formats. It's one of the most popular formats in Yu-Gi-Oh's entire history and I'm going to talk about GOAT format 101. So we're going to talk about the cards you need to know decks you might want to try out and on top of that some of the cards that you can't even play. It's going to be similar to my Critter 101 video where it was a supplementary content to my historical video so definitely check that out first and then come back to this and at the end of this let me know what you think about it and uh, what other 101 kind of stuff you'd like to see next. So jumping into it we we have all these monster cards okay monster spells and traps of course. So there's a lot of cards in Goat Format. The thing with Goat Format is that it's not just a couple sets. It's everything leading up to this point. So this was 2005 Yu-Gi-Oh. The, the format was around the middle of it. So you had everything from 2000 to 2005 to use at your disposal, minus some banned cards, which we we'll, we shall get to. And I should probably mention you know, specifically here that the the format goes everything from legend of blue eyes to the lost millennium set so no cyber dragon no exarion sorry it, it was hard determining exactly which cards i could have probably trimmed this down a little bit but i could have also added like 20 more cards there's a lot to deal with here and i'm sure when you get more into the format you'll definitely get a feel for other cards as well but this is the most important stuff that i feel like we should talk about so in no particular order we have air knight parshath this you don't see it too much nowadays this is more of like a historical kind of card okay where it's a one tribute and it inflicts piercing damage and when it does you actually get to draw a card so when your opponent's playing stuff like scapegoat or defense position monsters, you can more than not uh, attack into it and hit that offensive pressure by inflicting damage and drawing cards. There's plenty of other one tribute monsters that are very popular in, in this format, like, like Jinzo or the Monarchs, like Zaborg, the Thunder Monarch. Yeah, he's a pretty cool one. When it comes to the boss monsters, though, we gotta talk about Black Luster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning. This guy's a real badass. See, with Envoy of the Beginning, you have to banish a dark and a light monster from your graveyard special summon him. And he has two effects, one where he can attack twice, and the other one where he can banish a monster on the field. That's pretty nutty. You definitely want to play around this card, because this guy is, is the boss. Okay, and then we got Blade Knight. Blade Knight is a great warrior monster. There's a lot of great warrior monsters in this deck, with, or in this format, which we'll get to the deck for that. But Blade Knight, that he can destroy flip monsters and negate their effects if he's the only monster you have on your field, and he gains 400 attack when there's only one or less cards in your hand, meaning that this card works great with traps, and especially in later game situations. Then we got Breaker the Magical Warrior. This guy, he will... When he's somewhere on the field, you'll gain a counter, which will increase attack by 300 points, which is good. His better effect, though, is that you can use that counter. You can remove it to destroy a spell and trap. So he's a monster on the field that can put on some pressure and destroy a back row card. Chaos Sorcerer is Black Luster Soldier Light. So he can banish a card. He's not as strong, but he's still a great special summonable monster if you want to just get rid of stuff right away. Cyberstein, this guy is scary. It's a very weak monster, but you pay 5,000 life points to special summon one fusion monster from your extra deck. So you can use this in conjunction with really whatever you need. You can use it with Master of Oz for just OTK decks. There's a lot you can do with him. Didi Warrior Lady, she will banish both her and the battling card, which is great for removal and just as a really annoying card to deal with. Uh, Dekoichi, uh, similar to Dark Mimic, as a flip monster that you can draw a card. It's pretty simple. A uh, Gravekeeper Spy, another flip monster. You'll notice there's a lot of good flip monsters in this format. A uh, Gravekeeper Spy is great because it has very high defense, but not only that, what makes it different from its uh, from her peers of Giant Soldier Stone and Aquamador is that Gravekeeper Spy, one, is a dark type, which fits with Chaos, but can also special summon another spy from the deck, so it's great defensive pressure on that. Is, it, is that the right term? Defensive pressure? That feels kind of weird. Defensive, uh, whatever. 
Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer, this guy is pretty nutty. When he inflicts damage, you can banish two monsters from the graveyard, which is very anti-chaos. So if you're playing against chaos, you're going to want to run this card at least in the side deck, if not the main deck. Sangan, when he's destroyed on the field, you, or sent from the field to the graveyard rather, you can add one monster with 1500 or less attack to your hand. So the one you're primarily going to want to use is on is Sinister Serpent, but he's a great searcher card regardless. And Sinister Serpent is great discard fodder. You can discard from your hand and then during your next standby phase, he'll come back to your hand, which works great alongside many cards like Tribe Infecting Virus, Raigeki Break, or even to counter your opponent's cards like Delinquent Duo. Thunder Dragon, great for chaos decks. You can just dump lights in your graveyard. Great for that. Tribe Infecting Virus, you discard a card from your hand and you declare one type of monster. Then you destroy all other monsters from that type on the field. Great just wiping card. Really good against goats. Really good at pretty much taking care of any kind of card, even uh, BLS. Uh, Sukiyomi is a spirit monster, so at the end phase, it'll return back to your hand, but it's effect when it summons that you can flip a monster face down. So you, you can use this against your opponent's monster. You can use this to your own monsters to get those flip effects off. You can use it for Spy, Dekoichi, Magician of Faith, you name it. Going on with the spells, we have the Power Trinity, the Holy Trinity. I, it's, I really like to call it more of like the Power the Seven card, something like that, because there's so many great to staple cards. But the Trinity here is the Link with Duo, which you can essentially rip two cards out of your opponent's hand. Graceful Charity, you can draw three, discard two, and Potagree, which is, well, draw two cards from your deck. But then you also have really great other cards. You got Heavy Storm, destroys all spells and traps on the field. Mystical Space Typhoon, it's like that, but destroys one. Premature Burial, you can bring back a monster. Just gotta be careful, because if that's this card destroyed, then the equipped monster destroyed too. And then Snatch Steal, steal opponent's monsters, but remember, they can gain a thousand life points during their standby phase if this card's still on. So those are like your big power spell cards. But otherwise we have Metamorphosis, which is kind of like the, the bread and butter for the format. Um, it works really great along primarily level one monsters, but it's great with like uh, level level five, six and eight, kind of in that, in that range where you can tribute a monster and special summon a fusion monster with that same level. You mainly see it with uh, Thousand Eyes Restrict. Uh, Monster Gate and Reasoning, these are kind of two sides of the same coin, where it's really great for all well, the Reasoning Gate decks, essentially that you're special summoning very specific monsters from your deck, and which we'll get into. Uh, Noman a cross out, it banishes a face down card. Very scary, especially if it's a flip monster, because if it hits a flip monster, well, then they're all banished. Then we got Scapegoat, which is what the format is named after. Uh, a scapegoat is a great defensive card. It was released in 2003, but just given all the cards that surround this particular format, it definitely saw more of a, of a boost given its, uh, its meta viability. Uh, when it comes to the trap cards, these are probably your staple ones. I would say the main two is Mirror Force, which when your opponent attacks, destroy all their monsters, and Rain Destruction, which destroys one of your opponent's monsters and you both take damage. It's a great just instant kill card if you need it. Uh, Call the Haunted, bring back a monster. Sakuretsu Armor, you can destroy an attacking monster. It's like a Mirror Force Light. You can also use other cards in its place like Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, Raigeki Break, Bombless Trap Hole, depending on which kind of which kind you like. Uh, Solemn Judgment stops everything with cost half your life points. This card wasn't really played back in the day, but people have definitely seen its value since, just because of the, the, the mindset has changed since. Uh, Trencher Tribute destroys all monsters on the field when one is summoned, and Trap does shoot. You can only activate when your opponent has four more cards in your hand, then you can return a monster from their hand to their deck. It's a great card to get knowledge out of your opponent's hand and to just pick apart what could be a possible comeback card. Um, you got you got a lot of other great cards that you know I'm not really gonna mention, but Dark Magician of Chaos, Don Zaluk, Jinzo, Sacred Phoenix and Nephthys. Um, I have Black Pendant in here just for the uh, reversal OTK. Uh, when it comes to your fusions, you know, Dark Balter, Fiend Skull, you can use any fusion, because at this point, 
the Fusion Echo is unlimited. So if you play online, you can use any of these cards. Just, just keep in mind that you probably want to go over stuff like Thousand Eyes Restrict, Last Warrior, Ryu Senshi, Master of Oz, King Dragoon, Gatling Dragon, Fiend Skull Dragon, and Dark Palter would be the ones I would just try and focus in on. So now let's talk about the ban list. This had a very powerful ban list, banning the most powerful cards in the game. But hey, it still kept uh, some good ones. It's definitely a different list from the, the year prior. Um, we got Chaos Emperor Dragon, Fiber Jar, Magical Scientist, Makiora, Witch of the Black Force, Yada Garasu, thank God. Uh, Butterfly Dagger Elma, this was because of an OTK with Gear Freed. Uh, Change of Heart, Confiscation, Dark Hole, Harpy's Feather, Duster, Mirage, and Nightmare, Monster Reborn, Painful Choice, Rageki, Forceful Sentry, and Imperial Order. So all of these cards that you may already be aware of, you can't use them. You can't use any of these cards, you know, for better or worse. I mean, it would be kind of cool if you had Witch of the Black Force or Raigeki or Monster Reborn, Harpy's Feather Duster, but we have cards that kind of fit the bill anyway. You know, we got Sangan, Lightning Vortex, Heavy Storm. Not as great, but, you know, if you're going to keep something balanced, I'm fine with these getting cut. When it comes to the limited cards, these are ones we can only play one of in a deck. There's much more. I'm not gonna go over every one of these, but I'm just gonna kind of scrub through them. A lot of them are ones you probably expect to be at least at one copy. You, know, you got the Exodia pieces, Trinity, uh, just very powerful cards. You probably wouldn't want to see anywhere increased from that. For the semi-limited cards, there's not really too many of these. Semi-limited means that we can play two copies per deck in which we got stuff like Abyss Soldier, Manticore of Darkness, Vampire Lord, Nullman of Crossout, Reinforcements of the Army is good at two, Upstart Goblin. Last turn, it actually isn't a banned card, which you would have thought. Um, actually, to my surprise, Time Seal isn't even on this list whatsoever, which kind of surprised me, but I, I guess no one plays it anyway, so I, I bet to see a, a, a meta-defining hand destruction stuff like a 2003 style deck with drop off and time seal but maybe one of these days when it comes to the decks i got four decks that you may want to try out there are so many decks which i've talked about many on my channel before but if you're just getting into goat format i think these four would be a good place to start for you so this one we have the goat control deck this is more of a retro deck because goat control isn't top tier like it was Back in 2005, the meta has kind of shifted and GOAT has definitely taken more of a hit than many other decks of its time, but it's still a good deck. It's very much a gumbo of everything. You can use a lot of just stuff with it. You can really make your own imprint on the deck with just kind of one of everything. And then, you know, you got really good cards here. Some people play three scapegoat. I like two, three is a bit much because how many times do you need to use over eight tokens. I mean, you got Metamorphosis, which not only works with Scapegoat, but works with other cards like Sinister Serpent, Magician of Faith, Magical Merchant. Um, I do include Dark Mimic in this because it is level one, it works with Chaos. And, you know, again, the, the cards you can summon with this would be like Fiend Skull Dragon, Thousand Eyes Restrict, but if you swapped out Air Knight Parshath for, let's say, Jinzo, then you got level six on board. And also, keep in mind, Snatch Steal, you can snatch opponent's monsters and then metamorphosize them away. So it's a, it's a good start. It's where I started in GOAT format was with a GOAT control deck, and it's still really fun to play, for sure. All right, the next deck we got is definitely, I would say is, this is the top tier deck. This is the one that, there's many variations of Chaos decks. There's Chaos Recruiter, Chaos Flip, Chaos Turbo, this is kind of like a mix of little things here and there, just so you can get a taste of what you like. This kind of revolves more around the chaos mechanic and less about the scapegoat. So we have many, and we have two chaos sorcerers and more light and darks like the spies, like the thunder dragon. We do have a shining angel, a tomato, and you know, it's a bit more of a tightly knit strategy just to kind of turbo out. You could run like a magical merchant in this deck but you know, again, there's, there's different ways you can build upon it. All right, next we got Reasoning Gate. Reasoning Gate is kind of more of your combo deck. There are other combo decks on here like uh, Empty Jar. You could play an Empty Jar deck, but I, I really like this deck because you can tweak, you know, similar to the Goat deck, you can tweak very minute details compared to some of the other decks. And the whole thing revolves around 
some special summoning monsters and calling random numbers. So you want to play a, a variety of, of monsters. So, you know, I got five, seven, eight, fours, two in Cyberstein. There's many variations I like. I like this build, um, but there's other builds I also really like too. And I think it, it's, it's definitely a pretty fun deck to try out if you want to have something a bit different than your typical control aggro deck. Because this deck, for all intents and purposes, it is a combo deck, but it's still very aggro. Because you kind of want to kill your opponent in one to three turns. It's that kind of deck. All right, the last deck I want to talk about is Warrior Toolbox. It's such a fantastic deck. It is it is the anti-meta deck. So while we got the, the old top tier deck, the new top tier deck, and the combo deck, I wanted something kind of anti-meta. And Warrior Toolbox is like what it says. It's a toolbox. You can grab so many different warrior monsters. They all have very powerful effects. They're not particularly strong by themselves, but they're just, the utility is so good. Again, similar to Go Control, but you're relying a bit more on traps. Solemn Judgment is like the big one for this, and you're playing cards to just basically stop your opponent from doing anything and just picking them apart piece by piece. You know, you're gonna see cards like Blade Knight, Zombira, Didi, Assailant, Exile Force, Mystic Swordsman, level two. A lot of really great cards. It's a very fun deck and there's just many ways to play it. And like I mentioned, there's so many other decks we I could have talked about, like Beast Down, Zombies, Grave Keepers, Water Control, just things that I've, I've also mentioned in my GOAT format history video. But GOAT format is just a really fun format and I can definitely see why everyone loves it so much because there's just, there's a big opportunity for variety in it. And you know, while there are some degenerate stuff, most of the time it does feel fair, especially compared to other retro formats like Chaos or Yada formats. And there's just, there's so much fun to be had. Uh, I can't express it enough. And uh, yeah, I hope you all like this and have a wonderful day. My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba.